Oh my God, I love this. This, this might be a new favorite formula of lipstick. Ooh wee. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today we are doing our full, mostly full face with first impressions of stuff that I picked up during the Sephora Spring Savings event, VIB sale, whatever you wanna call it. I got this look, I think it came out so well. Now the journey to get to this face, watch the video because <laughs> it was, it took a little bit, but it came together. I think everything looks good and I'm really happy with how this came out. Before we get into the video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know every time I upload. And yeah, I'm not gonna keep you guys waiting because I feel like this video is gonna be long. So stay tuned and keep on watching. All right guys, so we are up close and personal and I am too excited to finally film, uh, I rub my eye cream in Lord, um, <laughs> to finally film my first impressions from the VIB sale. Now this is not everything, y'all know I lost my mind. I still have some products I haven't even gotten yet, but I wanted to do as full of a face as I can with the stuff that I have just to give you guys a first impression and we will have a few of these videos. We're gonna start with this Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum. I am gonna use the one size Turn Up The Base BBB Cream today. So I wanted to make sure my base was kind of hydrating because I feel like this is gonna be really matte on my skin. So this is what the packaging looks like. Super, super cute. I wasn't sure, like I feel like if I put this on, am I supposed to put a moisturizer on too? Like how does this work? But I feel like since it's a serum, it needs to go on my skin first, kind of confusing. I hope you guys can see that this is what this looks like. It has a very, it has like some little particles in the tube. We're just gonna put this pretty, not too thick. I got about this much in my hand, if you can see, very liquidy. But I'm making myself do this early too because I'm about to go on vacation. And I thought about this literally, I think last night. And I know this foundation is pretty much almost a perfect match for me right now. Maybe a smidge. It's probably a perfect match. But to me, it's light since I like my foundation darker. And then I was thinking, I'm about to get a tan, and this is not gonna be able to be worn when I get back. So I wanted to make sure that I let you guys see what it looks like. This feels really, really good. Right now, under my eyes, I do have just an eye cream, but I did also use my Becca Under Eye Fatigue Primer. I never film this early, and I feel like early in the morning, like early in the day, I have a puffy face. So I'm trying to minimize that, but this feels really good and it does kind of feel like it has like a smoothing property to it. Like my face feels plump and hydrated and weird, but kind of sticky. I don't know if this just needs to dry a little bit. I'll let it sit for a minute. Also, I am gonna do eyeshadow and I pulled out two palettes that you can get from Sephora right now that I have not worn or shown on camera yet. So this is the Supreme Nudes by Artist Couture. And then this is my Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I don't think I use this on camera. I am also going to use that Rare Beauty blush because y'all saw how excited I was about that. It still kind of feels a little sticky, which I don't mind, but it definitely feels like it helped smooth some stuff out. So interesting. All right, so this one size Turn Up The Base BBB Cream Beauty Blur Balm has gotten some pretty good reviews, I think, so far. And I just saw a video that he used this on Lori Harvey. I picked mine up in the shade Dark to Golden, which I explained in my video for some reason in the store. There was a different little sticker on the back right here that tells you what it is. The sticker in the store was different and it said it was red. So I was really confused. I'm just gonna start with a little bit cause I have no idea 
how this is supposed to blend out, if you need a lot of it. It is a very thick consistency, like a whipped kind of mousse. Which, honestly, I like this because it kind of reminds me. Y'all remember the Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse? I used to love that. And it kind of reminds me of that texture. So I'm just taking a brush. It's what I normally like to do my foundation with. And I am going to stipple in the areas I need more coverage. See, I don't know. It looks... When I start blending it out, like it looks a little, I don't know what shade to call it. I feel orange, if I'm honest. Forehead doesn't need as much coverage, so I usually just try to blend that in as much as I can. Don't really worry about the stippling as much. So I don't know how many, like if you try to equivalate, is that a word? <laughs> equivalate. Um, what I just used in terms of how many pumps, but I don't feel like I used a lot and I feel like this is drying down already. So this is what we have. I feel like I look orange. Now, if I had a tan, I do normally get a red, like a red golden. So maybe this could work on vacation. Um, but this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see, you can see my dark spots through this right now. So I am gonna add a little more to see if I can build up the coverage. And I'm just gonna try to put this in the areas I need more coverage. Gotta be careful because if your foundation shade is already a little off and then you add more product, it's just gonna make it even more noticeable. So that's something else that I always have to be aware of because I wear my shades darker. But yeah, you can see that is covering every thing. I'm just going to drag this down a little bit so it don't look as crazy. All right, that definitely gave me more coverage and I think I think it looks really good. I don't know why he want to call it. You know what? I feel like I just realized this. I feel like companies try to call stuff like a CC cream or a beauty balm or something like that to get away with not doing a lot of shades versus if you came out with this and said it was a foundation, everybody would be like how many shades is this? So, Patrick, what are you doing there? I see you. Either way, I think the coverage is beautiful. I like this serum so far. We just have to see how it wears throughout the day, but I feel like with this foundation, we ain't gonna have no problems. Next, I'm gonna go into the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. This, I'm gonna tell you right now, I have tried it because I did think I was gonna take it back but the other shades in between just did not work for me. So I kind of felt like if I want to have this, which I did, I'm going to have to go with this shade and just set it with a lighter powder. So everybody's been complaining about the applicator. It is a little hard to get out of the tube, but maybe that'll change as you use it. As long as it doesn't break right off the bat, y'all know how bright I wear my concealers. This is not my normal bright shade, but sometimes you don't need that. And I feel like this would be a good concealer to wear if I was trying to do just like an everyday makeup versus my glam, everything super highlighted. So because this is, I think this isn't as, I don't know what they call the finish on this. It says full coverage, breathable formula. I don't know how matte this is going to be. I honestly don't remember. Plus I set everything. So who knows, but I'm just going to start with my brush like I normally do and blend out around the edges and give everything a chance to try to dry down a little bit. So it's definitely blending out well. I don't know that I, I don't know. I didn't use a color corrector and I feel like it's covering my under eyes pretty well. I'm gonna blend the rest of this in with my beauty blender. And I believe this is one of the ones that I got from Colored Rain. Absolutely love these. I think it looks really good. I don't know that I would say that's full coverage though. I am going to add another layer because one, I don't think it's bright enough. And two, I just, I don't, 
think that's full coverage, but a lot of concealers say full coverage and we know how that works. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, mainly under eyes, and I'm going to let that sit for a little while longer. As far as the other products that I'm using today, I am gonna use my one size blush. This is, I don't know which one I'm using, either Rich Betch, and I have to try to say that right, Betch, because <laughs> it is with an E, try not to blind y'all. And then the other, is fire starter i feel like because of the palettes i'm thinking about using i need to use rich rich betch but this is gorgeous but i definitely am going to be using this today come on lights don't do this to me i feel like everything is blinding all this shiny packaging i definitely am using this today i am also going to open my fenty beauty i don't remember talking about this maybe i did the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder. The one I had before is too dark and I'm gonna just chunk it. So I'm gonna use this one today. This is in the shade Banana. It is, can you see that? A little, that looks super yellow. It is not that yellow. It's more of a kind of off-whitish, almost like an off-white beige yellow, which is what I go for as opposed to like that super banana yellow. And my other one was just like dark yellow, almost orange. I think I had cashew, definitely not my shade. Yeah, see that's better. So I'm gonna take my powder and I'm gonna take the other side of my sponge and I'm going to make sure I have no creases and just press that in. Oh, I feel like this is like super sticky. Are you supposed to bake with this? Well, we're doing it, but I feel like this is like stuck, stuck to my face. Like, will it brush away stuck to my face? Okay, I'm gonna go back around the edges real quick just to make sure everything is blended. I definitely always try to make sure, especially on my forehead with my powders, I really press it into the skin because that helps stuff not set into my wrinkles. But this, see what is happening? Okay, I'm gonna take a brush because I feel like I need to try to, why is that doing that? It like took something off right here. Well, that's not good. Yeah, what? I don't know what just happened. Let me try to just brush some of this on. I mean, it's definitely brightening, but I don't know if you guys can see right here, it took some of my concealer off, or I don't know if it took it off or pressed it in or what, but it definitely does not look It looks patchy. Has that happened? Has anybody used this and it's happened to them? Because maybe you ain't supposed to bake with this. I can't do anything about it right now. So we're just going to leave it because my foundation looks a little golden, reddish. I don't know what to call the color. Where's my face powder? I have the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I am gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of this on. I have the shade three in, so it is lighter. Okay. Yeah, that definitely cooled this off some. So it doesn't look as red. I don't know what's up with this though. That is bothering me. Y'all let me know if that's happened to you before because Maybe you're just not supposed to bake with this, but I feel like this is making me look so dry. I'm gonna spray some Fix Plus just because I don't like how this looks and try to like press it in and see if that helps. I do feel like that kind of helped a little bit. So that is a relief. I just don't want this to end up creasing on me and I feel like it kind of is already. All right, I'm gonna have to just move along because I don't want this video to be 50 million years long. 
So this is what we have with the base so far. I feel like from far away it looks okay, but I just feel like my under eyes do not look good right now. I don't know if it's the concealer or the powder. I feel like it's the powder because I've worn the concealer before. The powder I just opened. So I'll have to keep that in mind for next time. This is the Made for Shade Dark Trio. Yeah, dark, because the other one was medium dark. I kind of wish he would have did a cream in this too, but that's just me. I'm going to go ahead and swatch. These are what the three shades look like. This is the one at the bottom. Oh, that's dark. Got to be careful with that. This is the middle. That's gorgeous. And then that's the top. I love how these are all very different, and I'm glad I swatched them because I would have went ham with that dark shade and we would have had a patchy face. So I'm going to take, this is a Sephora brush. This is their blush and powder brush. This powder brush side is kinda, I don't know if you guys can see, like it's flat here and then yeah, you can see the difference. So we're gonna use that for contouring as well. I'm gonna start with the dark shade and I'm just dipping my brush in there. Yeah, that's dark. And I barely touched, so I am having a little bit of fallout on my table already. But we're just gonna go, as I say, go lightly, we apply more. That is enough of that. <laughs> I'm gonna go in my hairline. Yeah, see, that is gorgeous. I had the medium one and I'm wondering if it would have worked. It looked really light, but I didn't want to swatch it because I just felt like it was going to be too, like it was going to, the other shades weren't going to work well. I'd rather have one shade that is super dark that I would need to be careful with and then other shades that work better as opposed to only one shade that I can use. I feel like that is not blending out. <laughs> Now I did put this directly on, I did put a little bit of powder, but this is pretty much straight on top of the BB cream. So maybe that is why, like it needs another powder to help it blend better, but that looks a little, I mean, it looks, I like the shade of it, but I feel like it looks a little patchy with the middle shade on the same brush. Ooh, okay. Glad I went on my forehead first. I like the shade of this. It's red, very bronzy. I'm gonna bring that down a little lower just so there's no line of demarcation. I feel like, y'all, these don't play. Yeah, that one is more just like a normal bronzer shade. So these, right off the bat, I feel like they run a bit deeper than how they look which I personally like because I hate getting stuff and then feeling like the shades don't match me. I do feel like it's patchy. It looked a little patchy with that darker shade, but maybe it's also the brush that I'm using. So many different things, but as far as the shades and all that goodness, I think this is cute. We're gonna use the Rare Beauty. I'm going to commit because I don't know. See, here's the thing. I also don't know how to use this. We're gonna put it on my face. Let's just do it. I just don't know because of the texture, like do I blend this in with my sponge, which I never do. Do I use the blush brush? Yeah, I'm gonna just take my brush. That is pigmented. Trying to make sure that I keep it on my cheekbones. Oh, that is a lot of pigment, a lot more than I thought, but that is so pretty. Um, trying to make sure I don't blend it in too much to my contour and my bronzer. Oh, that is so pretty. So I went a little ham, we can see that, but look at that. And it is not picking anything up underneath. I was a little nervous about that and it could be because of the formula I'm just going back over with my bronzer and blending that in. And I'm just gonna take my powder brush and just blend around, but that is, to say it's a dewy formula, like I feel like that dried down, 
you still see the color. Bro, that contour is not playing. <laughs> I think this is so gorgeous. I'm also going to use the Rare Beauty Flaunt. This is their Positive Light Illuminator Liquid. This is in the shade, if I didn't say it already, Flaunt. I'm nervous, y'all, because I don't normally use liquid highlighters. Uh, okay. User error. I'm going to put a little bit of this right here. I don't know if these like blend down really fast, dry down really fast, or what. So we're gonna hurry up and do this section by section. I don't know how much of this I'm supposed to use, but we're gonna do section by section because this is a little scary. And I'm just taking, this is a powder brush, but I wanna use this because I just honestly don't wanna get highlighter on my beauty blender. Look at how well that is blending out though. I like that. Like it doesn't look too blinding. And I mean, y'all see, I am not using a lot and I'm kind of using the side of my brush versus using the brush flat just to try to keep it where I'm putting it. Okay, Minna, she has been talking about this forever. And it is like her staple go-to product that she uses to highlight. Yes, we're being extra. And again, this just dries down and looks so pretty. And I love that from front, like looking at me in the front, you can't really see it, but you can still see that sculpted, lifted. <laughs> yep, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Get out the highlighter. Okay, let's go into the eyes. So I have this Rare Beauty, where'd she go? Always an Optimist Weightless Eye Primer. Very cute packaging. One side is flat. I wonder why that is. Maybe so you can differentiate between that and the concealer. I hope this gives some coverage because I prefer products that have coverage for the eyes. I'm using my concealer brush, but I am wiping it off just to make sure there's no concealer on it because I do want to see, okay, good. She does give some coverage. Nothing too crazy. So this would be good if you're not wanting to worry about like having to blend out a paint pot or Anastasia Beverly Hills con um, eyeshadow primer that's white, dries fast, really have to worry about how you're applying it. So... Okay, this is good. We're just gonna do a quick little something something. I know y'all have seen this palette. I just haven't used it on camera. And I remember when I first used it, I was like, yeah, she's cute, but I kind of feel like how different is it from any of the other palettes I have, but I'm a hoarder. So yeah, we're keeping it. I'm using the shade Amara. Ooh, okay, was not expecting that right off the bat. Thank God I didn't go too far outside of my V because that laid down a lot darker than I thought it would. But it's also blending out very pretty. See, now this has me wanting to do like a super duper glam eyeshadow look. But again, I'm going to the airport like... I'm not that girl to be in the airport with full face, especially when I'm going to bed when I land. I'm gonna go in with the shade Groove, same brush, and just put that to deepen a little bit more. Why is that applying patchy? Okay, maybe it was just me and my eye fold because I was about to say, I do feel like that looks a little patchy there though. Could it be the primer? I mean, I'm adding more product and okay, I guess it's fixing it. No fallout, so that is a good sign. And I'm gonna go into a part. Oh, that picks up a lot. I'm just gonna do this kind of along the lash line. This is her cream to powder. Is this shade doing anything?
Okay, yeah, I see it. I was about to say, what is up? And we just went from, I ain't doing much eyeshadow to we got this smoky look going. I don't want anything super sparkly and I kind of want to keep this pretty matte. So I'm trying to decide, I haven't used this shade up here before, but I kind of want to use this one. Do we want to go matte or do we want to go kind of shimmer? Ooh, we're going to do the shimmer. Only because I like the tone of that better. It's a little darker actually. Too late. That is so pretty. I'm finished putting hello here on the inner part and then we're gonna put Patty on the outer part. Just because I wanna see. And when they're close together like that, they almost look the same. No, you can see a difference. Okay. I'm gonna deepen this just a tad bit more. I'm going back in with Groove. And then a part on top of that. A part's almost coming off as like a ashy kind of oh yeah you definitely see it now I thought it wasn't picking up but it is it's not ashy but it's definitely a cool tone and she is packing some punch right now I guess because I was talking crap earlier so we're just gonna go do a little more blending I'm gonna get that done and then I gotta see what else we got lips left and that might be it and some lashes so I'm gonna finish this real quick speed through it and then we'll move on all right for lips i'm not done with my eyes i need to do my lower lash line and mascara and all that but i am going to speed through that because i feel like this video is long i am using my makeup by mario ultra suede sculpting lip liner in chris and I'm glad I watched a video where somebody hauled this because I forgot this came with a sharpener, so I would have thrown that away. I think this shade is going to go, yes, perfect with this look. I did want to pick up another shade of this. I wanted to get the, is it hot chocolate or milk chocolate or whatever the shade was, but it was sold out and never came back in stock. And I didn't want to get Jeff because I have enough like super dark brown liners already. This feels very creamy and I wanna use the brush because I feel like this is something I always end up doing with my fingers. So I think this is great to have on here. And I think that shade goes really well with my eyes. And then for lipstick, I have his, what is this called? Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Cream in the show shade Toasty, which I'm going to swatch to make sure. It's a little darker. I kind of would have liked to go with a nude, but this is what we have, so we're doing it. Oh, I love the formula of this. Oh my God. And it smell, why does it smell like coconut kind of? When this, when he says suede, 100%. And now I'm mad I didn't try this before the sale ended because I would have got more. Oh my God, I love this. This. This might be a new favorite formula of lipstick. Ooh wee, okay, calm down, calm down. Okay, I don't wanna put a gloss on this, but I have a gloss that I wanna use. This is the Patrick Ta, which one is this? Plumping Lip Gloss, Major Volume Plumping Lip Gloss in two CCs. Y'all, my lips. 
Oh my God, I want some more. I might use some of my Sephora points and get some more of these because, ooh, okay. This is super goopy. I don't know if y'all can see that hanging. Yes, you can. That is very goopy, but let's see. It smells kind of cinnamony. cinnamony. <laughs> I'm trying to see if my lips are going to start burning. I don't like the ones that do that. I don't know if it's just me. And y'all know I love my lawless ones. So I'm trying to see. Oh, this feels like super thick. That's thick. I took a little bit off. That feels better. But I love how that lipstick felt by itself. So that might be why I'm a little biased. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to finish... I do have a liner. This is new to me. I don't know that I've ever used this before. What is on my hand? This is the Stila. I didn't buy this during the sale, but you can get it at Sephora, so I'm just gonna go ahead and include it. This is the Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. This says Micro Tip, and this is in Intense Black. I don't wanna do too much of a wing, but I definitely want to make sure that my lash line is darker. So I'm gonna go through the liner, speed through that. Ooh, that is really small. I feel like maybe I looked at these and it was a felt tip years ago and it was a lot bigger than this. I did not want to do my wing that big, but this thing just took off. I like this applicator. Is it felt or a brush? I can't tell. All right. I'm gonna do my bottom lash line and everything off camera. I'm gonna go to my brows and then come back and we are gonna finish. All right, brows are done. I just did a little bit on my bottom lash line. I'm gonna go ahead, I, I didn't mean to make my eyeliner this big, but that happens if you use <laughs> liquid eyeliner, you know. I'm gonna use the Perfect Strokes Universal Volumizing Mascara in Black from Rare Beauty. I hope I'll be able to see it because that is normally what is happening. Okay, it comes in a box and it's sealed. I was trying to just open it. Um, I was trying to just, I want to be able to see if this is going to do anything. And I feel like a lot of times with a new mascara, well, that's not true. Because I feel like my Pat McGrath and my Fenty one show up uh, no matter what. I just stuck myself in the eye. I can see it. She doing a little something, okay. I can definitely see that it's given me definitely some volume, has made them darker. Norm, I have mascaras that I literally will go to put on the first coat and you can't see anything. And those normally go straight in the trash because I'm not dealing with it. I mean, it ain't Pat or Fenty for me, but she cute. Like I feel like I could wear this on a more natural day. I'm scared to try to put this at the bottom because this brush feels huge. So I'm going to try, oh yeah, that definitely did a lot on the bottom. I'm gonna try that powder again with some stuff that I know never steers me wrong and see if that makes a difference because right now, I don't know, Fenty powder. Mascara's not bad, not bad at all. I like how it looks on the bottom lashes. And I can definitely see that it did a little something on the top. I kind of don't want to put on lashes because I am literally going to the airport, but I do have some of the Sephora lashes, so I kind of want to. This is in Swanky. They are super cute. I'm gonna do one on camera because I wanna use this. This is the Velour Lash & Go 3-in-1 Eyeliner Magnetic and Lash Adhesive. So this is 3-in-1, you can use it as a eyeliner, you can use it as a magnetic liner or a regular lash glue. And I remember when I bought this, I said it's pretty pricey, but if it's good for all three of those things, then it'll probably be worth it. This packaging, y'all. This is really, really looks. How to use with regular and magnetic false lashes. Start with one eye, apply liner from inner to outer corner of lash line, apply directly onto eyeliner. 
For false lashes, apply when eyeliner is wet. For magnetic, apply when it's dry. Step three, repeat on your other eye. I like that it says apply when wet so you don't have to wait. I just hope she sticks. I think this is so cool. These lashes actually, I hope you can see that through the packaging. It says a L at the top, there you go. And an R at the bottom to tell you which lash is wet. These don't need to be cut. Ooh, these are pretty. I don't think I put enough on the inner corner though. It's stuck to the outer, but it's not to the inner. So we're gonna add a little more glue. Oh no, this ain't sticking to the inner. So maybe it's too wet. It says apply when wet, but if this does not work, I'm gonna be so mad because I got this a long time ago and I cannot take it back. Okay, so not only is this not sticking, it is making a mess on my face. Okay, I'm gonna use a regular glue because I don't have time for this and I'm gonna have to try that again later, but that did not work. Well, that was the biggest fail ever. I could not get those lashes on. I tried the velour lash and go. I tried another just regular eyelash glue. I even tried my lash eyeliner and no, just no, just no. I don't have time. It is not crucial. I don't know if it's the lashes themselves or a combination of things, but we don't have time to figure it out right now. So we're not going to do lashes and we're going to go about our business. Quick little rundown of everything. Eyeshadow palette already knew that was going to be a hit foundation, base, everything, the blush, the contour, highlight, everything came together absolutely beautiful. I love how this looks. I feel like everything is balanced out. I don't look too orange. It does look a little dark, not mad about that. But yeah, y'all know I'm in love with this lip, the liner, the color, the lip gloss. I did feel a slight, slight tingle, but nothing crazy. As far as my base, I feel like that primer, that serum primer from Laneige actually did a little something. I still see a little bit of texture, but I feel like my skin looks good. Everything looks smooth. I'm going to have to try that Fenty powder again. I'm not sure. I've worn that concealer with other powders and it was fine. So I'm not worried about the concealer. What else? The eyeshadow primer. I think that works well. It was a good amount of coverage to even everything out. The Dior powder, I like this. I guess I'm just trying to figure out like what the hype is with it because well, I guess you can kind of see that. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's nice, but is it like the best powder ever? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It feels good, but I mean, I kind of feel like it kind of gives the same finish as my Sephora Micro Smooth, and it's a lot cheaper. And I'm glad I tried this now because I was thinking about getting another one, but I don't think I need it. So what else? Mascara was good. You all saw the blush. Absolutely beautiful. This whole look came together. I love how it looks. That liquid highlighter. I am going to start playing with that more because I do like how I look highlighted, but it looks like it's my skin. It's not sitting on my face like some of my powder ones do. I think that's it, guys. If I forgot anything, I like the eyeliner. Eh, what else? I think that's it. If I forgot anything, I'll try to remember to comment below. But let me know what y'all think about the look. I love that Patrick Star foundation. The one size turn up the base, BBB, whatever. BBB cream. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like this. I think my face looks good. We can still go somewhere, even though my eyes, I had to fix it a little bit because it did mess up my eyeshadow. I don't know what happened, but long story short, full face first impressions. Y'all saw the struggle, but it came together. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. 
Bye.